What up y'all, it's Timmy. And today I'm gonna take you on a potentially crazy four wheel drive trail with the truck house. Let's go do it. Welcome to Truck House Life, baby. hit this crazy freaking four-wheel drive trail see what's in store for us Whew. thank you for starting take my time and try to capture a bunch of cool shots like the one you just saw. Hello, Mr. Cactus. Look at that. Okay, I've decided I'm going for it. We're gonna go try Burdu Canyon Road four-wheel drive trail and drop down off these mountains way down there under the plateau. The reason being is just looking for another adventure, bro. That's it. So here we go. I read mixed reviews online. A lot of people said it's a pretty easy four wheel drive trail, but they all had giant Jeeps with big tires and stuff. I couldn't find anything about someone doing it in a full size truck camper. Looks like I'll be making a video about it. So I actually four wheeled into Joshua Tree National Park on Old Dale Road, which wound up being moderately crazy with the truck camper. And now we're in the park, passing over Sheep Pass right now. And I'm gonna take the geology road into the Purdue Canyon Road. That's the plan. So I'm basically going from top to bottom, which should make it easier than going up because at least I've got gravity to kind of pull me down. All right, here's our turn off. So we're going to head out geology tour road about five miles or so, and then the Purdue Canyon Road trail starts. I don't know about the road closed ahead sign. That seems not good. Road is not maintained or patrolled. Hmm. Here we go. We have just entered the four-wheel drive area. We're not quite to Purdue Canyon Road, but I think we're just about to where it really starts. The whole goal is to get uh, to BLM land tonight so we can camp for free. So that's where we're going. Pretty soft sand so far, but I'm going downhill, so it uh, doesn't matter. We're rolling through the flats and the trail officially starts right up there when it starts climbing the mountain, I believe. Here's our sign. This is a little bit confusing because Bordeaux Canyon goes to Dillon Road as far as I know. So those should be connected and 29 Palms is to the right. So that arrow needs to be up higher or something. I'm trying to trick people. We're going left into Bordeaux Canyon. Here we go. Let me go ahead and lock up our hubs. I'm probably gonna air down. I'll feel it out. As soon as it starts getting really rough, I'll air down. I get those shots just for you guys. It's crazy. It's crazy. So we're at mile marker zero. I just reset the mile marker. It's already pretty narrow. Going pretty well so far. 3.8 miles in on the odometer. It's been really off camber and sandy. Probably through like five or six like really tippy, tilty obstacles. Like basically just ditches. My truck is too wide. Looks like Jeeps and small vehicles do this trail mostly. So I literally had to just put my tire down in the ditch and let it be tippy and have a choice. Luckily, this is a pretty stable truck camper setup compared to some other setups. I think we're at the summit 
and I believe we're gonna start descending fairly shortly here. We're mile 4.7, I just dropped into the canyon. This looks kinda like the point of no return. We're dropping down into the canyon. Oh my God, guys, I just realized I'm literally almost out of gas. Oh man, I'm just kidding, I got a whole nother tank. <laughs> Yeah, we're getting down into the meat of the canyon, it's looking like. Some of you guys might have known this, but I used to do a whole bunch of rock crawling, kind of in my late teens. My first car was a Suzuki Samurai. I don't know if that was by uh, by fortune or luck or what it was, but uh, it's kind of a piece of crap car. It broke down a lot, but it taught me how to work on cars, number one. And number two, it taught me how to go four-wheeling. Basically spent all my money I earned on the Samurai and I built it out to do all this crazy rock crawling. And I started a Suzuki Samurai Club in the North Georgia mountains and we go out four-wheeling. At least once a month we do a meetup. Anyway, I used to be super into four-wheeling and uh, I just kind of got out of it. It's a really expensive sport, you break parts a lot. Recently I've started to kind of get back into it a little bit. Not necessarily for the four-wheeling, but uh, I think just for the exploration, I, I don't know. I just love not knowing what's around the corner. I love it. It's the best feeling ever. It's essentially like the curiosity of life. Just like what's around the next bend. It's exciting. I don't know. If you're always living like what's around the next bend, then I don't know. You're going to have a very interesting life. That's my thoughts. That's why I like four wheeling, I guess. Speak of the devil. Wonder what's around this bend. I also forget to mention the reason I woke up so early to get out of here is because it's a freaking Saturday and this is supposed to be a super narrow trail. Might as well be one way. It gets all cliffed out and canyoned out. I don't want to run into other people coming up while I'm trying to go down because I take up the entire trail and there's not a lot of places to pull off it looks like. So that's, that's why we're leaving so early. A couple little boulder majujus. I'm gonna get around them here. Also be careful not to pinch your tire. So really four-wheeling is uh, honestly, it's all about tire placement and momentum. Those are like the two most important things four-wheeling. So essentially, if you have an obstacle in the trail and you don't have enough clearance on your vehicle to just drive over it, then you have to put your tire on top of that tall thing, on top of the obstacle. A lot of people don't get that because that's counterintuitive. You, you think like, oh, why would you drive over the obstacle with your wheel? It seems like the wrong thing to do. Well. That's so you don't hit your undercarriage and tear your car up. That's the number one thing. Number two is momentum. So luckily we're going downhill right now. So we have gravity to help us roll over stuff and get through stuff. The one sketchy thing about downhill is once you drop over something, sometimes it's hard to back up to reapproach it. So you have to really make sure you pick the right line the first time. So in a way, it's more difficult than going uphill because you just, you have to be accurate with your tire placement and uh, how you approach things. So speaking of approach things, start to get narrower down here. Sorry if I'm all jacked up, y'all. This is the first uh, time I've made my own Vietnamese coffee. I've been buying a lot of coffee in this road trip and uh, I realize how much stronger and how much more caffeine the coffee I make has. Another trick I use when I go four-wheeling, especially if you have a long wheelbase vehicle, like I have the longest wheelbase vehicle freaking made, Ford F-350 double cab long bed. Both your mirrors and your sides, I'd recommend adjusting your mirrors so you can see your rear tire and see the rocks that your rear tire is hitting out of both of your mirrors. The reason you wanna adjust your mirrors like that is you wanna do everything you can to avoid pinching the side of your rear tire when you go through stuff. All right, my dudes, we have approached the main obstacle, I believe. This is the one I've heard of. It's the switchback with uh, the rock cliff in it. So here we are. Oh, look here. Let's fix that really quick. Hopefully there's not a lot of crazy obstacles, but I know this is supposed to be one of them. So let me drop this air vent. I do always forget to put this thing down. It's also turning the propane off just for good measure. Ooh, dusty. Anyhow, let's uh, get you guys set up for this obstacle. Little side shotty shot. Cool.
too bad. Getting into the canyon, nothing like going four wheeling by yourself. A little rock ledge we got around there. Then we get into a little bit of gnar down here. Maybe let's go ahead and get you guys set up for it. This is all pretty chill, moderately chill. Now keep in mind, this ain't no just normal four wheel line. I have a freaking truck camper. I weigh 10,000 pounds, literally 10,080 pounds. Once again, like I was saying before, if you have an obstacle that's too large to fit under your car, like your car's not gonna clear it, that means you have to put your tire on top of the tallest obstacle. So we're gonna have to drive directly on top of this boulder, down all this chunky stuff, right against the cliff wall. can't tell how narrow this is for a full-size truck. Not too crazy. Once again, just careful tire placement and you'll be through what I hope is the crux of it. We'll see. Let's continue around the corner. We got what looks like the tightest pinch coming up, so let's check it out. To you guys, this probably looks pretty mellow. This is gonna be really tight for the truck, but I think we got it. You can see the spots where people are like rubbing their tires really bad. I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna rip my sidewall out, but yeah, this is tight. We got such a long wheelbase, we're gonna have to swing this way and then come back this way. The hard part is I don't have a spotter to tell me where my tires are. And it's hard to see over your hood when you're We'll show you how tight this actually is for an F-350. Check this out. Here's my wheels over here. Basically, if you get any further over, my rear wheels are going to flip this probably. Check this out. I couldn't get any closer to that. This bike is going to barely touch my sidewall. I don't have a choice, though. nerve-wracking all it takes is hitting one of these rocks too hard with the sidewall of your tire and it could rip your tire out rip your sidewall out and then you'd be in trouble let's continue around the corner once again I have no idea what's around the next corner let's go find out oh. 
so much work to film, but it's uh, I have fun with it, and I'm sure you guys enjoy watching. I hope. So. For the record, that uh, first big switchbacky obstacle was uh, 6.2 miles into the actual trail. You go down Geology Road, and it just kind of dead ends, and then uh, Burdu Canyon Road starts from there. So 6.2 miles in, you'll hit that obstacle. I get nervous every time I see a blind, a blind turn. It's fun in a weird way though, I can't explain it. Here's another one. What's around the corner, my friend? Ooh. Oh man. Well, that's a wrap, y'all. Stay tuned for part two of this video where we continue with the Purdue Canyon adventure and we'll see what happens. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you on the next adventure. Peace, y'all.